and get comfortable. Good. All right, so starting in just an easy seated position, it's a, a little opening meditation. And then I want you to take your feet, soles of the feet together, and make a diamond shape. So not your classic tight Baddha Konasana. I want you to be nice and wide. And let the eyelids be heavy or closed. Maybe you just kind of gently stare at a spot on the floor. And we'll just arrive together. And even virtually, there is this collective energy of coming together. And I love the yin yoga practice. Um, I think everybody should have a little bit of it in their life, right? especially if you're a power flow person, especially if you find it challenging, right? Because in those challenges is where the change is. And the beauty thing, the beautiful thing about this practice is you're going to be sitting for at least five minutes in each pose. So discomfort, a lot of the stuff that we're kind of going through emotionally, all this kind of unknown, it may come up. It may come up and you sit with it, right? You can't run away from it. We don't want to be fearful of it. We just want to sit and watch like a third person right? and be aware. It just makes us more conscious. And if you get sharp pains or you go numb, then you move, right? You make a subtle shift. We never want to hold in numbness or a stabbing being pain, but discerning what kind of discomfort is it? Like if it's dull and achy, and the mind and the ego just wants you to come out of the pose. Well, what if you just stayed a couple extra breaths? And uh, you may feel a shift. You might, you know, you never know. So the deal with this is it's not an engagement practice unless, like I said, if you are very loosey-goosey, then we do want to keep a little bit of engagement so you're not overstraining the ligaments and the tendons. So from here, soles of the feet together, nice kind of broad diamond shape. And all I want you to do is just drop the chin to the chest. We're gonna start at the base of the body. So the base chakra is your home, your root, your sanctuary. We're really important now because we're kind of being told to shelter in this space. And so hopefully you love where you are. If you don't, you gotta love this because this is your greatest sanctuary you've been given on this planet is your body. And right now it, it needs your attention for wellness, for connection, for emotional cleansing. So from here, I want you to take a nice deep inhale and just drop your right ear to your right shoulder. Can you breathe? We don't do very long holds around the neck because obviously there's a lot of nerves and stuff, but we will get into the neck and shoulders towards the end. Right now, I just want to kind of warm up the neck. If you want to add more, you'll take your right arm, just drape it on top. Don't pull. Just let the weight of the arm kind of start to feel a deeper stretch to that left side. And then let the left shoulder get really heavy. And there's tons of little kind of nerve tendons running from the body into the skull. So just these slight movements start to kind of wash the breath into those areas. Just take three more full breaths. It's really about letting go. Okay? We've had an eventful week and I, I feel like we've got more in front of us, but all we own is this moment. So if you carried a lot of stress, strain, fear, it did its part. Hopefully you're in a safe place. You can let it go, right? Bring in that moment of peace. And then slowly release the right hand. Let the chin come back down to the chest. And then you'll go to the other side. So slowly, left ear to the left shoulder. And 
and just add, just add as you see appropriate. But you don't need to. Sometimes we, <laughs> we always think we, we just need more, more, more. And we're in kind of a, a space now where it's like over accumulation. And I, I get it, I get it. You want to be prepared. So what's that balance of what do you need to add? Maybe you don't need the arm, especially if it's just pulling too much. Really trust from the heart as opposed to the head. Let that right arm be heavy. Deep breath. We don't focus so much on the breathing in and yin, but oh, breath has been my savior lately. Just even just a moment to really tune in, exhale. Good, and then slowly come back. You can hop the head up. <clears throat> First five minute pose. All you're gonna do is forward fold. I have the timer for you. So five minutes begins now. First minute is really settling in. So don't be afraid to move, to shift. If you're like, oh, my knee, grab something, tuck it underneath your knee. If you have a block, a lot of times when I don't have props and my neck's feeling sensitive, I'll just bring my elbows to my feet and bring my thumbs to my forehead so it creates this kind of support for the neck. But you can let it hang, right? The idea is in yin yoga, we're, we're really kind of starting to let go. And it takes time. So the first minute is all the kind of shifts. And then as we approach the fourth, it's the commitment. Right? It's not about how deep you're going into the pose. It's about the length of the pose. You feel the pelvis open. If you like working with colors, like if you're very distracted these days, colors, the breath, these are all tools to keep you in your body. Lower the pelvis is like a deep rooted red. And the sound that goes with the floor of the pel 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 pelvis is lum. So if you can't get out of your head and you're thinking about, oh man, why did I sign on? I gotta do these holds for 20 minutes and blah, blah, blah. It's okay, that's normal. What if you just kind of quietly chant lum or just feel a hum? And all that is, is it's a tool to, to keep you in the moment. And you're just approaching halfway.
Okay, there's your chime. Don't rush. This is like very much part of the practice is use the earth instead of lifting your body up. I want you to push your hands down in to the ground to draw the body away. Slow. So now you really get to kind of start to feel the blood flush into those areas of compression and you'll help the knees back together. Bring your hands behind you. And just let the muscles relax. Now we call this the subtle body practice because okay? it's less of this kind of gross sensation, but more of the blood flow, the energy through the ligaments, the tendons, the nervous system, that vibration. And it's non-momentum practice. We're learning a lot about that. So just breathe into it. We're going to stay in the hips. So we're going to set up in classic yoga. It's like a low lunge. And yin, they call it dragon. But what you're going to do is just bring your right foot forward. The left foot and knee will be back. Right. If you want more padding, you can bring it in there. Um, I, what I normally do, and this may be or may not you, and if you don't have the pillows, it's okay. I put pillows right by here because I overextend in my flexor. So this just kind of gives me a little more support or you can bring them in front of you. Now, here's the thing, you got five minutes. I'll start the clock. There it is. So the first minute, you can move around, shift. Don't feel like you've got to hold that right foot. in a certain place. It's a very organic practice, right? And, and the whole point is that you're learning to let go, right? Alignment has a place. It keeps us safe. It builds strength. That's not what this practice is about. It's about getting into the deeper layers of the body and releasing undue tension, which we all have. And a lot of that tension will sit in the joints. And so once again, recognizing dull and achy, dull and achy, uncomfortable, but sharp and heated, especially in a joint, come out. Don't be afraid to come out. And look, you've got five minutes to get into this pose. You're one minute in. So maybe you just up on your hands. There is a little yawn action in the arms. And then the body settles a bit. You can come down onto your elbows. Within the shape, you become a watcher. separate of your conditions to just see. And once you're on the other side and you see, and a lot of these uncomfortable feelings and emotions flow through us as opposed to own us and control us. We're learning how to be non overreactive to really explore in that space. Because discomfort is needed. It's needed to help us shift. Trials, tribulations, trauma. We're gonna step outside of them so they don't own us. 
You're halfway there. I'll let you kind of go deeper, but I just want you to notice if you're clenching in the jaw. Let the jaw relax. Just check in with the body. The belly relax. Where are you holding? And sometimes you get a hold there for support and stability, but maybe it's a place that you can let go a little more. So do so. Once again, real slow, push yourself away, right? We want to stay soft in the joints and then just very gently drag your right leg back nice and heavy, lay flat onto your belly. You can make a pillow with your hands. If you got one handy, you can use that. And not that I want you to compare, but can you connect to that area, the right hip, maybe feel it more in the left. Where do you feel a shift? If you don't, it's okay, it's okay. One more full breath here. And then depending on what you need, like really listen to the body, either just push back to child's pose for five breath, or like it's in the evening, maybe you need that little bit of heat or kind of aliveness to bring in to balance out all the yin, you can do a down dog for five breaths. So what is your transition? Serve yourself the two options to stay more grounded child's pose. Do you give yourself a little more heat and energy? Go into down dog. And then you'll set up for the second side. So left foot forward. No expectations of what this side's gonna feel like. Move whatever you need over. Left foot forward. We're gonna get right into it.
Now, remembering the first minute you play, right? You can be up. It's okay as long as your knee feels okay to roll to that outer edge of the foot. You are looking for somewhat symmetry from the first side, but depending on balance or imbalances in the body, it may look very different. So just be in this moment. The idea is I'm just giving you a canvas and something to look at and within your, your own breath, your own body, you cultivate the art, the experience of presence. And just like that, you're already one minute in. So right now we are opening, stretching the ligaments and the tendons and the fascia on the right hip flexor. Those ones get a stretch. Your left is slightly compressed in the inner hip flexors. And the body kind of feels this compression and it'll make new blood cells. And then start to go to those areas and help push out blockages of stagnant energy. So if kind of discomfort or you're all of a sudden kind of wondering how long it's gonna be, <laughs> just start to trust your breath. Don't run away from where the sensation is. Go to it. Sit in it. Befriend it. We can't put a blind eye or pretend everything is for you. We have to allow ourselves to recognize the emotions that we, a lot of us like to kind of just push aside and say, it'll be okay. And that's not good for ourself, our sanctuary, this body. Which right now is the most important thing. It should always be the most important thing. You're just crossing the halfway mark. And just be in the sanctuary, breath and body. Take a ride. It's a ride.
All right, slowly pull that left leg back and let be there for that release. Lay flat on your belly. This is part of the pose. It's part of the practice. And I think the most valuable part is those in between phases. So no rush in your own time. You're gonna push back to child's pose or down dog again. Like what is your transition? It's still very peaceful, like in, in your down dog, even though you're using the muscles to hold you in there, there's a softness to it, especially in the face. Child's pose, maybe you adjust the knees a little to feel a little different around the hips. And we're gonna come into the spine and the shoulders. So we're gonna do a pose that's called quarter dog. So take your time, finish up, and then <clears throat> you're gonna come onto your knees. Now, I'm gonna show you just a couple options. Just it's on virtual, I can't really see your bodies. I can see little ones, but if you have shoulder impingements, this one kind of might not be the best thing. And we're only holding for three minutes in the shoulders. But your knees are going to come underneath your hips. And then you're going to bring your left forearm down so that it's parallel to the front short edge of your mat. And that's where your forehead's going to go. When your forehead's resting on that arm. And then you're going to bring your right arm forward. Now, different than on a Hatha Asana, let the elbow get heavy. So in our kind of puppy dogs, we really reach. You're going to let the arm get heavy. And if need be, take it out to the side. If it's still not working out to the side, give a little bit of engagement. Now, here, if your low back is healthy, just let yourself kind of sink into the pose. If you've got low back issues, I want you to work with the tailbone drawing back and the low belly drawing in. So for three minutes, don't be afraid to kind of shift, but the idea is make all those shifts in the beginning and then observing the need or the desire to shift in the later end of the pose. And before jumping to moving, sit with it, the why how come, what it feels like, and just observe it. And then if it's, this, it's just sharp or doesn't like the pose, you move, right? We never want to do damage to ourselves. So on your marks, get set, yin yoga. Let go around the neck. Let go around the shoulder. Let go in the belly. Let 
release the melting and strain, pressure, stickiness, the unknown. Sit within the moment that you have control. You can connect. Just past halfway. You just slide in the child pose. Turn your head to the right and bring your arms by your side, broaden across the upper back. Maybe connecting to the blood flow in that right shoulder a little bit. And one more full breath. Good. Set yourself up for the second side. So you'll come back up on your hands and knees, hips right over your knees. This time the right forearm comes down to your mat. It becomes the pillow for your forehead. The left arm goes forward, left elbow, really soft. Drop into that left shoulder blade, forehead to the forearm and you're off.
slowly pull it back to child's pose. Maybe once again, playing with the variation of the knees. Maybe this time they're completely together. You can kind of feel just a difference in the hips and the pelvis. Both arms come back by the side so that the shoulders can release. And it's just slowly melting all the stickiness away. So we're kind of bringing hips and shoulders together. This is a variation of what's called the cattail tilt in yin yoga. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna lie flat on your belly. And we're, once again, since we're working with the spine and the shoulders and they're just smaller joints than the hips, it'll be three minutes each side with the transition time in between. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna drag your right knee up and then come on to your left hip. Okay, so you can push your right hand in the floor and you're gonna take your left hand and grab your right knee. Start to stack your right hip on top of your left hip. Make any subtle movements that you need. And once again, so I'm gonna give you two arm options. If you really need chest opening, just take your right arm and let it hang out to the side. Okay? Three minutes, some people love it. Some people are like, that's just too much pull and strain. Okay? You can always bring your right hand onto your right your hip. Or my favorite, is because we need neck strengthening now more than ever since we're just on the tech for our wellness even now. You're gonna take your hand behind your head and do a little tractioning of the head. The thumb and the index finger come on either side of the base of the neck and the skull and gently press your head into the hand. And then the elbow is gonna point above your head and you're gonna soften in the shoulder. So what this does is it plugs the arm bone into the shoulder. So you should feel more of a stretch down the sideways and up in the back of the scapula as opposed to the chest. So three minutes, you can play with the arm. Once again, I'm just giving you kind of an, a broad option. Yin yoga is, is really about self-exploration, self-practice. So, and I say this when I have my public classes, it, Read to get together. Uh, should I start at that time? To practice. And that practice is meant to give you the energy to really take the practice into everything you do. Your breath and everything you do, to those moments. So this late in the game, I should be just a subtle voice on your screen, where is your inner voice? It's very present. And a lot of times we've got to listen to all of those voices. Some of them are saying what we want them to say, but we have a lot of internal dialogue that is not really ours. And it's not until you hear it that you're able to harness it. Just releasing in the spine, releasing in the heart, releasing in the hips. Two more minutes.
start to bring the right hand back towards the right thigh if it's not there already. Slowly roll, unwinding the spine and turn your head to the left, bring your arms down by your side. And just let the spine kind of come back to neutral. And you'll set up for the other side. So slide the left knee up. No rush. Right arm's gonna kind of hold that left knee into place. And by all means, if it needs to let go, let it go. You're not trying to pin your body down in any place. Try to get as deep onto that right shoulder blade as you can as the left arm reaches behind. And I love twists because they're, I mean, personally in my body, it's, I'm very off balance in my spine and I, I recognize that and the more you kind of learn about yourself without judging like certain aches or pains or injuries, chronic stuff that's been going on, uh, you start to, that's just part of you. Love it. Love it. It's a gift. Here you go. It's always nice to take a couple deep breaths and we're going to do some pranayama and our meditation, but in twists, kind of working and trying to keep health within the diaphragms and the lungs. Last few breaths, really make sure you're present in the body. Now this transition is gonna be a little different. 
All I want you to do is bring your left foot over back so that you roll onto your back nice and sweetly. And you move your body like it's delicate crystal. Settle in. And you stretch the legs out a little wider than you would. Take the arms out a little wider than you normally would, but still below your shoulders. Come into pyramid or star. Just feel the body and the breath open. And when we disperse our body a little more, you, you might feel a little more connection to that subtle body, the unseen energy in the body. So we're gonna do a little pranayama. If you want to stay lying on your back for the next 10 minutes, do so. Hey, if that is your home base. If you want to sit up for seated meditation, you can sit on up. Isn't it great in your own home? You don't have to worry about anybody kind of judging what your choice is. Hey, if that's something that you do, I do. It's all you. And we're going to do a Veloma breath. I like this breath in transition. We're going to add a little bit of color therapy to it because it is a gray, rainy day. And it's always good to have a little light in your life, especially this time of year, this time in space. So it's going to be a three-part breath. The first little breath is into the low belly with a, an orangey-red color. And then without exhaling, you're going to inhale more, bring in a light yellow. And then breathe in a little more for the third breath. That yellow will shift into green. Right? So these are the colors of the chakras, the rainbows. And it's just kind of serving a little light into the body. If you don't want to use the color, by all means, don't. And we'll start our 10 minutes. We'll do probably three rounds. And then we'll just go into a seated meditation. You can continue to breathe the Veloma breath if that keeps you more centered in the meditation and you just need it. So once you fill up that color, you gotta exhale and we release it all together. So if you're sitting up, I always suggest sit up on uh, a pillow or something, just so your hips get a little higher. If you're lying down, you're just relaxing. And just connect to your breath. I'm gonna bring a little light into our sanctuary, which just means safe place, secure. Your body is your sanctuary. It goes wherever you go. And as you take a full inhale, exhale completely. And then inhale, just a little sip. Have like a bright red, orange. You can draw that color in, feel it kind of wash around the low belly, the floor, the pelvis. And then gently inhale a little more without exhaling. That bright yellow color of willpower, of drive, of presence fills in through the abdominals, the diaphragm. And when you have that stability there, you can inhale just a little more up into the heart and the chest. It's green with nourishing kind of warmth. Pause, see if you can relax around that. And then exhale the rainbow, pouring out the green, the yellow, the orange and the red. Take a natural breath in between. And then your next inhale, a little sip into the lower belly and washing the breath around. 
Roll it up into the diaphragm. See the color change. Roll it up into the heart. Relax around the shoulders. And then exhale completely, leaving a residue of those colors to heal, to nourish. We're just feeling completely empty. Take a recovery breath in between. And then come back. Inhale, first third. Hold the light there. Inhale, the second third. Hold the light there. Inhale, fully. Hold the light there. And then empty out. Bring your gaze inward right between the brow. Maybe you even see those rainbows of colors behind the eyelids. If the mind wanders, you can use that breath as a tool to bring you back to your sanctuary, this physical body. When we're physically well, we can serve the emotional, mental state of ourselves, and also others sit in that space, it's the beauty of your sanctuary.
full back awareness into your breath. You're lying on your back, gently start to move your fingers. If you're upright, you can fold forward. Just pull the awareness slowly back into your space. On your back, you stretch. Or bring your knees into the chest. If you're upright, stretch the legs out. You can switch the cross and fold over again. And we're all just gonna come to seated to, to close. No rush, no rush, no rush. Start to rub your hands together. Get a little bit of friction in there and I want you to drop your eyes in there, see that clear palette. Blank slates. Let it go so we can start anew. More presence. And then gently bring the hands to the heart. And you're, we're gonna close with an all. We'll take an inhale, exhale. Once again, you're in your own space. Don't worry about it. Nice deep breath in. Exhale through the mouth. Inhale. Ooh. Even from afar, I feel and I bow to your vibration. It is a gift. Be good to your sanctuary. Namaste. Happy Sunday. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, I'll be back here tomorrow at 10 a.m. for a little bit of flow. Feel free to email me at nataliedonyoga at gmail.com for feedback, because this is the first time I did a public one or if there's a certain kind of sequencing that you want to work on or anatomy. Or if you just want to say hi, other than that, I hope you enjoyed it. Be well, be safe. Thank you for your presence. And hopefully I'll see you soon.